Oh, healing river, send down your water, send down your water upon this land. Oh, oh healing river. I choose not to read the daily paper. Not to watch TV or cable news on a regular basis. Not to listen to Pacifica or NPR radio on a regular basis. Because I've made these choices simply so I don't set myself up to have an angry day or nightmares. As I walk through life, certainly there's ample opportunity for events that occur within my own line of sight to upset me to disappoint me, to make me angry, so I got my own. Why should I subject myself to these reports that choose not to base their stories on the truth, but rather take the time to plot a path into my shock zones? Welcome to your living room. Many have felt, been moved, been motivated, been inspired to think by one of the true pioneers of harmonic rhythm. The man who said, I'm the doctor, I'm the pill, I'll take away your headache, I'll make you feel better. The one and only Dr. Funkenstein. He said, free your mind. Globally known to us as George Clinton. George Clinton's voices have embraced us through a sea of tales, costumes, and rhythms since 1956, as he successfully produced many fans, collaborators, emulators, and clones through his gift to the world called P-Funk. We're honored today to have the opportunity to invite you to a dialogue with George Clinton on the premiere of PBS, Psychotic Bomb School. Welcome to your living room. George, after all these years in the business, taking your visions to the stage, who are your people? Who are you trying to reach? Who are your peeps? Well, the closest ears, closest faces, any and everybody that are, are lending ear. Mm-hmm. Um, no matter anybody's what. Anybody's mind I run across, I look both ways before they cross their mind. You know, anybody that's paying some attention. No matter what color, no matter what. Oh no, shape. no, no! I'm colorblind anyway. I'm probably, I'm probably looking at you know, what um, what, what do you call inner spe inner stellar inner entities? In, any entities, you know, life forms, uh, you know, not only color but you know, people or but Extra aliens and anything else. Mm-hmm. Extraterrestrial. Extraterrestrial, you know. I mean, I think it's. Far too late now to uh, worry about color because I think we're gonna get some multi colors, some uh, colors that we don't even know, know what they are. We so far away from um, color and things like that. One thing that keeps us there is um, those tr trouble starters, the ones who like to pit colors against colors. Mm -hmm. You know, Cause they, they have none. Yeah, they they keep us busy trying to. Just start trouble between us, you know. All colors don't even have nothing to do with that. It's just always be a third, somebody somewhere mm -hmm. using color as an entity, use a gender as an issue to keep you busy fighting each other. You know, colors one of them. No, I never think about. Mm -hmm. George, what's your definition? You, you know, you've created this this phenomenon that you've shared with the world, and it's called P funk. But let's hear it from you. Let's hear it from the creator's mouth. What's your definition of P funk? People, well, people, what I'm saying, I use it all probably uh, for anything. To me, it's um, anything that you, once what you've done your best, it gives you the ability to say, funk it. So it's the attitude you can take once you've done the best you can in anything. You can let go and uh, let the funk take, take its course, the one or 
the mm-hmm. force or whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. But it's that um, vibe that once you've done the best you can, that belief that it's all right, and you know, not only belief but knowing that it's all right. And in music, you know, you just hit that stage and uh, trust what happened, whatever sounds come out, and whatever attitudes is taking place on the stage, and it's uh, entertaining. Mm-hmm. So people is like. Anything it want to be, just what I mean, give you room to be any style of music, any any noise can be appreciated. Mm-hmm. Sounds like it's also nourishing. I mean, oh, it's definitely nourishing because you don't have to fight or guilt or any trouble of to get there. And once you believe it, though, you have to do the best you can for it to really work. Otherwise, it can be chaotic and all those other things that limit it. Mm-hmm. You know, majors against minors or. Out of tune, or just playing nerve-wracking sound. Right. But once you get that 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 vibe, uh, like feedback with Jimi Hendrix. Mm-hmm. Before that, somebody's like, "Turn that goddamn guitar down." Right. Right. You know, but once you you're made to appreciate it, it's no longer antagonizing. You know, same with uh, hip hop rap. At first, when you hear records, I'm jumping from one record to another, and looped and skipped and merging from one record to the next. I mean, it started out with some DJ, you know, to keep, try to keep you on the dance floor. Right. Merging one record into the other with the ability to make you stay there mm-hmm. until you appreciate it. You know, to now, if you don't have that little jump or skip or a major against a minor, it ain't happening as far as the kids is concerned. Mm-hmm. Now, we grew up. It shouldn't have been that hard for us to, understand, to appreciate. We had been listening to AM radio for a long time. You remember how the station used to want to come in, the other one going out? Right. right. You're hearing two records on, at the same time. And, I mean, you get used to it if you live right on that borderline where two stations and we're at. Mm-hmm. You know, so you, that's why you start jamming to it. Say, wow, that should, wish that was like that for real. A record gets stuck. You say, well, that sounded pretty good. Mm-hmm. So your mind is able to to turn things into a positive um, situation, even if it's negative, if you got some funk in you. You are truly one of the original gangsters. You are an OG. (laughs) So you've been here, you've seen a lot, you've given a lot, and I'd like to get your overview of today's contemporary urban music. Once some arrive and enough people say, I hate it, (laughs) they just gave it the energy to stay there. Mm -hmm. And to me, once that happened, as soon as I see it happening, a lot of people saying, I hate it, I uh, gravitate towards it. And it's perfectly what's supposed to be happening right about now. Mm-hmm. You know, we was growing up, rock and roll got on people's nerves. You know, and uh, doo-wop became Motown. Motown became the new sound of that, and that was cool. Right. Like, you know, smooth out. James Brown came along and, mm, God, the people wonder, what is he saying? <laughs> and it Travel. worked like a hell. And, get, you know, got still got slick, music got slick again. We came along and started doing, whoa, hi, hey, chanting. And people say, what the hell are they doing? Mm-hmm. And then I think we evolved on up into um, the 80s, the funk and telekey, and all those songs that it was really slick. And here come a... <laughs> <laughs> they, they spit the beat. They start. They t- always take it back to, to the basic level. Whenever someone gets too sophisticated, mm-hmm. they take it right back to a, a base, a real basic level, and evolve its way back up again. Hip hop is coming along. And I feel like hip hop funk is the DNA for hip hop. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's all one thing, but it's sophisticated enough. In a, in a few more years, it'll be like Oscar Brown Jr. Mm-hmm. Hey, daddy, what the deal with the? Go-